We're on the bench seat of this old pickup truck, and it's got a stick shift right there. All right. Really roomy truck. This person has seen us pull up in the vehicle, and they see that it's fun to drive a vehicle, and it gets you places, and it takes you to the destination you want to go. And so they say, hey, could you teach me how to do that? And you say, sure, hop in. All right? And then you say, all right, this is your brake. That's your gas pedal. Who remembers learning how to drive? Some of you don't remember, but you're still driving. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll wait till you leave before I leave tonight. You sat in a vehicle and watched somebody else drive at least before you tried. My dad did that with a semi-truck, he tells us. that. Yeah, he watched somebody first. But it sure helps to not eat up the clutch to have somebody there to say, now, hit the clutch. Second. No, it's over there. No, keep, no, that's, don't let it go right now. That's fourth. Sec, there you go. That's second. It sure helps to have somebody, maybe even to put their hand on yours and help you guide it till you get the feel for it. Okay. Now third. You can't keep going on that. You're going to blow the engine up. Okay, shift. All right. There we go. There's three. You know, and... Uh, you know, my dad helped coach me learning how to drive. And, and then, uh, you know, was it ever scary when you go and sit with the uh, state trooper who's going to watch you drive? Well, you get, that was a piece of cake after riding with my dad. <laughs> he stressed me out and scared me to death, you know. So I get in the car with this little lady, and I stress her out, scare her to death. She's screaming, take me back, take me back. Pass this guy. I don't want to have to ride with him again. And I, I think I passed with just a few points to spare. I think if I'd missed one more turn signal or let it roll off the hill when I was supposed to park it, um, probably wouldn't have had my license. So all of this, I mean, and then on your dashboard, there's this whole Christmas tree of, of options. You've got hazard lights. You've got high beams, low beams. But none of that stuff do you need to know the first day. But here's what we've done, okay, and this is Christianity as a movement, and, and this is me as a person, is I want to go through, and I want to explain every gadget on the steering column. And I want to explain the difference between an automatic and a manual transmission. I want to explain the difference between front-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive. I want to explain why the tire says 165, um, 55R, 14, because, you know, R means radio, and 14 is how big the rim is. And, and I said, I want to sit there and break it all down. Well, this one's a percentage. And, and, and then, okay, so why does the oil say 10W30? Well, the W stands for weight, 10 weight, 30 weight. Why do they don't have the second W? I don't know. And I'd spend an hour talking to you about the W. And then you would probably be the person that sits there and goes... Are we going to drive this thing? Wait, do you know who invented the internal combustion engine? Do you understand the power of a steam engine? Do you know why we went to gasoline? Do you understand? If you were driving a diesel vehicle, the, oh, have we talked about changing oil? Have we talked about how often the fuel filter needs to be changed and the air filter? Do you know where your air filter is? And we go, no, see, that's the institutionalized approach that makes people eggheads, and they have no skills behind the wheel. And that's why you and I struggle, because we don't, aren't fluent in the language to convey hope to people. We want to sit there and go, oh, no, 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 you, want, you need to understand the nature of God is this. And we want to argue about who God is. And he's saying, just invite him to the party. Well, no, no, no. You don't understand the king? Let me explain who the king is, where he came from, and, and we want to go all the way back to Genesis 1. And I don't see Jesus going around doing Genesis 1. But I've always started with Genesis 1. And not that you shouldn't, not that it's wrong. It's what are we accomplishing? Because we, we end up with something. And if it's all information-based... We've got some really educated drivers who still have never gone on the road. Now, all you farm kids, you learned to drive around the field a few times, and the only panic you caused was the cows going, what on earth is happening? Um, and that's a great way to learn how to drive before they leash you on society. Um, 
but this is, the, this is the role of, I'm not just going to invite this person. Notice it's the same me inviting, same messenger, and it's the same attendant who's going to come, but now I'm going to help them learn what the kingdom's all about. Um, maybe you remember attending your first formal meal, and all you've ever had was mac and cheese and pizza at home, so nothing really mattered how you did it. But then you go to a formal meal, or you're going to go on your first formal date, you know, and somebody has to tell you there's going to be two forks, and this is what you do with this one, where to set your glass, you know, and what to do with a napkin. You need somebody to help coach you through that. You didn't need to know that when you were three years old. There's stuff that people don't need to know when they first come into the kingdom of God, but they do need to know how to get going in it. And so, how to get going in it includes several things. One is how to tell the story. How to invite others to what Jesus is doing in your life. Okay? This is what we've got to learn to navigate early on. Because we're going to be doing this the whole journey with Jesus. And some of us may have not done it in the last three years. Because we think that's a preacher's job. Well, he's got a CDL. I mean... Why would I need to drive? Now, he's got an ordained CDL. Nobody has to drive. Just everybody jump on the church bus, and the pastor will take us there. But that is not the system Jesus set up. Within months of entering the kingdom, he was sending these guys out driving on their own, and this person was no longer there. Jesus was no longer there coaching them on how to do it. They did it, and then they came back. He says, ooh. I kind of got a dent in the fender. Good job. You didn't wreck it totally. Keep trying. We'll bang that baby back out, and we'll send you out on another trip. You can do the grocery shopping now. We're going to send you. And so they're going out into the communities, and they're bringing people. And, and how much book smarts did these disciples have? They didn't understand the millennium. They didn't understand the kingdom of God. What kind of car is that? I don't know. It's one that drives. You want a car? Hop in. Watch me drive this thing. It's so much fun. And then people see someone healed. They see somebody set free from the, their past. And they go, give me a chance. I want to drive this. Like, okay, here's how you do it. Let me bring you to Jesus. And then Jesus teaches them. And they go, they go back. So um, that, that whole process, they're inviting. I mean, what did they go do? He says, go and declare the good news of the kingdom. And so they say, hey, everybody, come into the kingdom of God. And then they get back alone with Jesus. And they're like, who's going to be in charge? And when's this th thing happening? They didn't have the book smarts. They didn't totally get it. But they had been bringing people in until the point Jesus had 500 disciples. That's devoted, committed followers when he left. And as he's leaving, he's talking with the disciples. And he opens their understanding. And now they get the whole manual. Now they get the whole book. And then they start talking on a different level. But they were already driving. That's right. They were already and that's what we're going to relearn how to do as a body of believers. Is how to help people get in the wheel and start being led of the Spirit. And start making a difference in someone else's lives. And stop thinking I came into the kingdom so he could give me groceries and a new car. Oh, come to church, read your Bible, and, you know, give an offering. Well, there's got to be a little bit more to the kingdom of God than that. That's not the good news. Those are things you learn along the way, but that's not what it's all about. And so whatever we focus on is what they're going to do. You know, if you teach them how to drive a stick shift, they're going to drive a stick shift. You teach them how to drive a diesel, teach them how to pull a semi, how to back up a semi, they're going to back up semis. They're going to learn how to do those kind of things. But if nobody trains them or the opportunity is not available for them to learn, they'll never do it. The only reason you know how to ride a bicycle is because there was one available. And if we don't give people that opportunity, they're never going to become what a true disciple is, and that's someone who brings others to Jesus. So they're going to learn how to tell others. They're going to learn how to be spirit-led. Spirit. They're going to tell others. They're going to be led to the Spirit. They're going to learn how to follow the Lord because they're going to find issues in life that they don't understand, and they're going to learn how to open up their Bible and read it and find answers.